parts of the human circulatory system and their functions. Overview The circulatory system, or cardiovascular system, has two main structures. The heart, which is the cardio and cardiovascular system, and the blood vessels, which include arteries, veins, and capillaries. That's the vascular and cardiovascular system. The study of the human circulatory system includes a study of the blood, which has a liquid phase, blood cells, and platelets, and the blood's pattern of circulation. The circulatory system moves blood through the blood vessels that reach every healthy cell in the body. The circulatory system is unique to vertebrates. Functions of the circulatory system The circulatory system works with many other body systems to maintain the health of vertebrate bodies. The functions of the circulatory system are reviewed on the following slides. The diagram on the right uh, depicts many uh, blood vessels, including arteries and veins. The arteries are in red, uh, the veins are in blue, and these uh, blood vessels are often named after their function and or where they are located. Uh, for example, the femoral artery uh, down here, that runs along the femur, or the thigh bone. Functions of the circulatory system Gas exchange The circulatory system carries oxygen to every cell in the body and carbon dioxide away from every cell in the body, working with the lungs to exchange gases. The diagram on the right depicts gas exchange happening at the alveoli which are microscopic sacs of air in the lungs where gas exchange with the circulatory system takes place. Functions of the circulatory system Immune system transport The circulatory system circulates cells and molecules of the immune system to all parts of the body. The diagram on the right depicts a white blood cell being carried off in the bloodstream to the site of an infection. Functions of the circulatory system Lymphatic system The circulatory system and lymphatic system come together in lymph nodes, where white blood cells coordinate immune responses. The lymphatic system is composed of lymph, the liquid phase, as well as lymphocytes, white blood cells of the immune system, and their pattern of circulation through lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. The lymphatic system also returns fluid to the circulatory system. The diagram above depicts a lymph node. Here, lymph enters through afferent vessels on the left, is screened, and returned to the blood. Functions of the circulatory system Endocrine system The circulatory system carries hormones, which are secreted into the blood by endocrine glands, to their target cells in different parts of the body. Hormones travel throughout the body via the bloodstream. The endocrine cells secrete the hormones to the bloodstream, and the target cells have hormone receptors. Functions of the circulatory system Digestive system The circulatory system carries nutrients from the small intestines and the liver to every cell in the body. The diagram to the right illustrates amino acids being absorbed from the small intestine into the blood. Functions of the circulatory system Excretion. The circulatory system carries blood, water, salts, and waste to the kidneys for processing and removal of unneeded byproducts. The diagram on the right illustrates the blood entering the kidneys by way of the renal artery. After the kidney filters the blood, it returns it to the circulatory system by way of the renal vein. So the blood comes in here through the renal artery, and then the kidney filters it, and then returns the clean blood back by way of the renal vein. Functions of the circulatory system Nervous system and muscular system Our heart rates change with one's level of physical activity. This is under control of the nervous system, which communicates with the heart's pacemaker, also known as the sinoatrial node. The diagram on the right illustrates the heart's conduction system of nerves. The sinoatrial, or SA, node generates a pulsing signal for the heart's muscle cells to contract in unison. It is almost like uh, m members of a rowboat. In order for the boat to go somewhere, 
all the rowers have to row at the same time. If everybody is rowing at their own pace, the boat's not going to go anywhere. That's kind of how the heart works. All the cells in the heart must contract at the same time for the heart to be an effective organ uh, to pump blood through the circulatory system. Parts of the human circulatory system and their functions. Heart. Blood flows through the four chambers of the heart in a unique pattern. The pulmonary side of the heart is the right ventricle and the right atrium. The right atrium has thin walls and receives oxygen-poor blood via the largest veins, the inferior and superior vena cavae. Blood enters a thick-walled right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps the oxygen-poor blood into the lungs. Parts of the human circulatory system and their functions. Heart. Continued. The left atrium has thin walls and receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs. The thick-walled left ventricle pumps oxygen-rich blood into the largest artery, the ascending aorta. Branches off the ascending aorta carry blood upwards to the neck and head. The thoracic artery carries blood to the rest of the body. Note, this is a mirror image. Look closely at the left and right labels. Parts of the human circulatory system and their functions. Heart. Continued. Oxygen depleted blood, filled with carbon dioxide, returns to the heart through the superior vena cava. It travels through the right atrium and ventricle, then through the pulmonary artery back to the lungs. Carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen in the lungs, and the process begins again. Note, this is a mirror image. Look closely at the left and right labels. How the heart pumps blood. How does the heart pump blood? The walls of the heart have several layers of tissue. The thickest layer, the myocardium, is made of cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle expands and contracts involuntarily due to the impulses from the central nervous system. Blood fills the chambers of the heart when the receiving valves are open, and the pumping chambers of the heart expels blood out with force. The Cardiac Cycle the cardiac cycle is responsible for the heartbeat. As the heart muscle relaxes, blood is drawn into both atria and then into the ventricles. This lasts about 0.4 seconds. Atria contract and push any blood remaining into the ventricles. This lasts about one tenth of a second. Ventricles contract and blood is pushed from the ventricles into the arteries. This lasts about 0.3 seconds. Valves. Atria and ventricles are separated by one-way valves, known as atrioventricular valves, or AV, which help blood to flow in one direction from atria to ventricles. Ventricles and arteries are separated by one-way valves, known as semilunar valves, or SV, which help the blood flow in one direction from ventricles to the arteries. In this diagram, Blood is being pumped out of the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve. The closed AV mitral valve is stopping it from flowing back where it came from. This is absolutely uh, crucial for uh, sustaining life because if blood flowed back in the direction which it came, the heart would not be an effective organ at pumping blood. Valves the heartbeat is the sound of the valves closing under the pressure of blood trying to go back in the other direction. Lub is the first sound made by the closing of the AV valves. Dub is the second, louder sound made by the closing of the semilunar valves. Keeping the blood flowing in one direction is important for the heart to pump blood efficiently and effectively. If blood is not kept flowing in one direction, there may be inefficient pumping of blood and an inadequate supply of oxygen and nutrients to the body. When a valve is leaky, this is called a regurgitation. Some regurgitation may be very minor and not ever be diagnosed or have any symptoms. Controlling heart rate. How does the body control heart rate? In the wall of the right atrium is a group of cells known as SA node or sinoatrial node that act as a pacemaker for the entire heart. They beat automatically, even after the heart has been removed from the body. 
Electrical impulses from the pacemaker are sent from cell to cell in the heart, coordinating muscle contractions in the atria and ventricles. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, is used to measure the electrical activity of the heart. A normal ECG is shown here. Controlling heart rate. What types of physiological agents control the heart's natural pacemaker, SA node? Physical activity changes levels of cellular respiration because the cells of the body need more ATP energy. This causes levels of blood oxygen, blood carbon dioxide, and blood pH to also change. When oxygen drops and carbon dioxide increases, the pacemaker responds and heart rate increases. Controlling heart rate. What types of physiological signals control the heart's natural pacemaker, SA node? Continue. Hormones can change heart rates as well. An example of this is in the fight or flight response. In this instance, panic causes a flood of epinephrine into the bloodstream, which is a signal to the pacemaker to increase heart rate. Temperature affects heart rate. A fever leading to a 1 degree Celsius increase in temperature can lead to an increase in heart rate of 10 beats per minute. Measuring pulse, heart rate. Heart rate is expressed as the number of heartbeats per minute. A typical heart rate for a resting adult is 72 beats per minute, meaning that each cardiac cycle takes 0.8 seconds. We determine pulse by measuring the number of heartbeats for a set period of time, and converting the counts to beats per minute, beats per minute or BPM. We can count heartbeats in several places on the body where arteries are located under the skin allowing the rush of blood caused by ventricular contraction to be felt with the tip of an index finger. Examples include the wrist, neck, foot, and ankle. Measuring Pulse Heart Rate To measure a pulse, 1. Place an index finger on the inside of the wrist, below the thumb. 2. Place an index finger on the side of the neck, approximately 5 centimeters below the middle of the jaw and next to the trachea, which is also known as windpipe, in the groove of the neck. 3. The heart rate can be measured in two places on the foot, either in the groove between the ankle bone and the heel, or on top of the foot. Anatomy of blood vessels. Blood vessels are tubes made of layers of cells. Endothelium is the inner lining of all blood vessels. It is a single layer of epithelial cells. Arteries, veins, and capillaries differ in the layers of cells that surround the endothelium. Arteries have thick outer walls to withstand the high blood pressure due to the ventricular force of the heart. Veins, on the other hand, have much thinner walls because they are not under as much pressure. Capillaries have a very thin wall and a very small lumen, or space, uh, in the blood vessel to allow easy gas exchange uh, and nutrient exchange. Arteries. Arteries are vessels that carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart to the capillaries. They have a thick layer of smooth muscle cells surrounding the endothelium. They have a highly elastic epithelial layer surrounding the smooth muscle. Arteries are under high blood pressure and so are thicker and more flexible than veins. Arteries respond to changes in the environment by dilating, or opening, or constricting, or closing, with the help of the muscle cells. Their responses change the pattern of blood flow through the body. For example, when an injured person initially goes into shock, the constriction of blood vessels in hands, feet, and limbs diverts blood flow to the major organs. Arteries as arteries get further from the heart and closer to the capillaries, they branch off and their diameter decreases. Large arteries are like large pipes carrying large volumes of blood to the head or limbs. They have nerve cell endings that connect them to the nervous system. Medium arteries distribute blood to more areas of the body. Arterioles lead to capillaries. These vessels can cut off blood flow to particular capillary beds as needed, for example when you're cold. Your fingers and toes tend to get cold first because the blood flow is being cut off from those areas and diverted to the more important areas that need to be kept warm. 
uh, the internal organs in the abdominal cavity, as well as the brain. Veins. Veins are vessels that carry oxygen-poor blood, carbon dioxide-rich blood, from the capillaries to the heart. Veins have a thin layer of smooth muscle cells and less elastic epithelium, as they are under lower pressure than the arteries. Veins have valves that prevent backward flow of blood as it returns to the heart. Veins have tributaries rather than branches, and the diameter increases as they get closer to the heart. The diagram above illustrates varicose veins, which are caused by a deformed valve causing abnormal blood flow. As a result, the veins bulge and twist. Capillaries. Capillaries are thin walled tubes made of endothelial cells and surrounded by a thin extracellular layer. The thinness of the wall allows movement of cells, molecules, and fluid into and out of the capillaries. The diameter of a capillary is just larger than a blood cell, ensuring that each blood cell can dump the oxygen it is carrying to nearby tissue cells. Some capillaries allow movement of cells across the capillary wall, into and out of tissues. Nutrients and oxygen exit capillary blood and enter the tissues, while waste and carbon dioxide exit tissues and enter capillary blood.